Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, I, I'm really happy to be here today. So my name is Moira. I'm originally from Italy. I'm a senior UX researcher at MediaMarkt Satur and also, as Sina said before, mentor at ATP List. Uh, I will talk about a bit later. Um, so uh, why I'm here today. Uh, in the last eight years, I had the opportunity to conduct research in different fields. I worked for startups, uh, corporate governance companies, uh, research institute as uh, freelancer, and I had a lot of uh, experience during this, this time. And also during these years, I, I had to present my research uh, in front of different audiences. And uh, step by step from the beginning, when I started working as a researcher just after my master, I realized that we couldn't create something just once and then was good for everyone. So we, I needed to adapt uh, to different audience. And that's why uh, today I'm happy to share my knowledge. So hopefully uh, you will find some tips uh, so that you can apply also at your work. Uh, briefly about my experience, uh, I have uh, a background in social sciences, uh, focused also on cultural analysis, international relation and development. I studied in, in uh, Denmark with uh, a short period also in Belgium and China. After, like uh, during my master in the last semester, I had to uh, I was I worked as internship intern as a, a, for a research institute and then uh, I was hired and this was in Italy. Uh, after some years, I decided that uh, I wanted to explore more both the world and also uh, the research uh, uh, the research area. So I uh, worked in Ireland for a, as associate research analyst for a corporate governance uh, company. Uh, after some time, I discovered UX research, so I studied that a bit, and then I uh, started um, as freelancer uh, for companies in Italy and Denmark. At the time, I was living back to Denmark. Uh, and then after some time, I decided to join a startup, a robotics startup, uh, where I worked for three years, more or less. As lead UX researcher, I had a lot of fun, super interesting uh, area, also robotics. Uh, and then um, with my husband, we moved to Germany. And then now I'm here, senior UX researcher at MediaMarkt Satur. Uh, and as, as Sina said before, I'm also a mentor at EDP List. Uh, EDP List is a, a big uh, association where, like, mentors and mentees are meeting. Um, it's free, so it's a voluntary uh, association. I do it for free. And uh, so everyone that uh, would like to find a mentor or just like uh, 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 to have a chat about UX research uh, can go on EDP list and search for me and, and book a call. I'm happy to, to have a chat. Um, in the, the police, of course, there are UX designer, uh, product owner, uh, project manager, everyone that works uh, in, uh, in these uh, uh, innov innovative uh, areas. And we also help, uh, for example, if you're looking for a new job or you're transitioning, for example, there are a lot of guys transitioning from academia to, um, to, the, to the industry. We help also to take a look on the CV portfolio and so on. So happy to help if you want. Just uh, we, we are like a lot of uh, mentors. So just uh, look for that one that uh, fits with your needs. So uh, today I'm here to present user research insights and uh, to show you how to make them stick with your audience. Um, while I was uh, creating the presentation for today, I found a nice um, blog uh, from Zach Naylor, and uh, I got two of his quotes. The first one is, conducting research is one half of the equation, presenting user research is another way that compels the audience in the, is a, is in a way that compels the audience in the second half. So I think that this is really like a, a like a small summary of uh, how 
to, sh to, to let you know that how important it is to present your research, your insight, your recommendations, and also why so it's important uh, the, the presentation itself. So, uh, first of all, I mean, as I said before, I worked in different uh, companies, so I had like uh, my way to discover also some of these tips. Uh, and of course, it's important to adopt uh, presentation techniques. So uh, like uh, try to put down the story that you would like to tell to the, your audience. Of course, the visual are also important. Uh, too much text, uh, that's not good. So try to be uh, to use like uh, icons or uh, images and so on that helps you to to show them what you would like to also to transfer the knowledge that you would like to transfer to them. And of course, the slides, also the number of the slides, for example, a good presentation is more or less 10 slides where you manage to summarize your rep research report and uh, is really effective uh, to, to, the, to your audience. Another quote uh, from Zach Naylor, without adequate reporting, research is just a pile of data. A presentation can help you to make your data actionable. I think that uh, this is like when I found it, I was like, ah, I have to share this, it's really, really great. So the audience, um, remember that you are not talking to everyone, you are talking to someone. So when you sit down and uh, start writing the ideas of your presentation, uh, I like to uh, design my slide on a paper also to find out the story I want to tell and also to see if maybe a slide that I put in the middle should be at the beginning and so on. So to, to see if everything goes well in, the, in my story. So you need to also think like with who are you going to talk? Who are you presenting this, uh, this insight? So your audience needs several things from you. The topic, explain really well what you're talking about because sometimes happen that uh, of course, maybe you are talking with um, stakeholders or uh, members of your, uh, of your team or of your company, but not everyone is, is so familiar with the topic. So try to explain briefly what you're going to talk about, what your research was about. Then, of course, the story that you want to share with them, the interaction, so make them... Um, uh, make them like active, uh, try to create a dynamic presentation and also the takeout. What we need to also think like, okay, maybe in a week after uh, we finished our, we presented our insight, these people will remember something, what we want them, what we, what we would like them to remember about it. So where to start with? What's the goal of the presentation? So you need to think also like the story, but also what kind of, uh, what you want to share. So. Do you want to inform them or share insight? Do you want to pers persuade them or build credibility or uh, immerse and make user real people? That sometimes is also difficult. And or reveal and demonstrate your expertise. So put down uh, what you would like to share and uh, from there start with, uh, with building your presentation. What else is important? Empathy? communication and culture. So the ability to fully understand our audience. I, I, I mean, this is really what, what matters. We need to, to know what are their goals, what are their interests and what are their needs? Because the audience are different. They have different interests, they have different needs. So what we would like to share with them. So we need to think of our audience like a user group. We need to find out who they are, their goals, their needs, the task they, they require to be able to meet their goals. So we need to communicate our insider the recommendation effectively also with non-technical audience and keep them engaged because sometimes it happens that maybe we are talking with someone, uh, maybe a stakeholder that um, requested a research for a design, and then it would be a design of maybe a, like a, a user interface, an app or something. 
but they are not so technical. So we need to also take into account this. And we will see later also how to do that. So communication. We need to share information with the audience. And the language and the ter terminology is really important because as I said here, if we are presenting something with non-technical audience, we need to be careful on, our, on the language that we use, on the terminology, because if we maybe use mm, too technical uh, uh, words, maybe they will not follow us. So we need to do a step back and, and think like, okay, the people that I'm talking to today, what's their background? What's their expertise? Do they know already user research? What I'm, because for example, uh, let's say that you are telling them that you conducted a unmoderated semi-structure, uh, I don't know, um, interview or something like that. There are so many terms that they don't know. So it's good to maybe just say like, um, we, we, create, we conducted some interviews with the users and blah, blah, blah. So always use examples also. I like to also get some quotes from interviews, for example, and then catch their attention. For catching their attention, you need to drive research engagement. So the presentation needs to be easy to understand. Your audience need to understand what you have found as quickly as possible. Try to explain your findings to be as use, usable as possible. Easy to care. How can you communicate the findings in a way that the audience feel it? Or how can you increase their empathy? And what, it, what, and what will hurt them enough to make them fix? Easy to action. For many stakeholders, once they get the problem, they go directly to the solution. What can, they, what can we do to give our audience options? And then easy to share. The research finding needs to be easy to share and access so that there is no excuse for not having seen them. Another nice quote that I found is from H. Uh, Locke. Uh, once you have hooked them, into the problem and they're asking question, that's a time to go into more detail or complex variants. Another aspect that is really important is the culture. And as I told you before, I study culture analysis. So culture for me is fascinating, of course, but it's also really important uh, because we need to take into consideration the background and expertise of our audience. Are you presenting to the same type of audience? Who are the people in front of you? Do they understand research methods, but also the mindset? So there are some people maybe that we are presenting stakeholders, manager, that they are difficult to change their opinion. So we need to create a presentation. We need to show them the data that we found so that they will see the, the, the needs and the, and the frustration, the issues from the user side, for example. Again, on the target. So depending on the audience, the presentation needs to include different information that are tailored to the goals of the audience. And in addition to this, you should also consider that people working in different roles look for different level of evidence. So as I said before, um, let's say that you are presenting to your colleagues. So it could be that there are other UX researcher, there are UX designer. So the, the knowledge and the, the insight that you are sharing with them is completely different if you are sharing with the managers. They, are, they have different needs. They want to know different things about the research. So all, always pay attention to, the, to, to who are you talking to. Another example is uh, here is more tangible. So I got uh, the development team and the managers. So the development team need information that affects their implementation efforts directly, like a design changes or uh, details. You should tailor the information you present to developers with recommendations that can be directly applied to their current project. So do these changing affect mostly content or mostly front end development? Do they impact the backend and architecture? So this is what is important for the development. While for the managers, have different, they have different needs. 
Most probably they will prefer that you show them the impact of this recommendation to the business. Most probably you should talk about the KPIs, for example, or how your work fits into the company's objectives. They don't have much time. So you need to be brief, concise, and go to the point. So don't take too long to, the present, to present the results. Give a brief overview of maybe the, uh, the, the method that you use, the users, but then go to the point. So we should try to understand them and empathize with them, but we shouldn't take for granted their knowledge about the subject. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they understand the research project. So, of course, as I said before, we need to take into account their background and expertise, but we don't know because maybe um, we are talking with a PO that before that was also a developer. So he has a different background than a person that maybe worked as PO for the entire career. So we need to take into consideration also, um, of course, if we know the people is much easier, but in case we don't know, we need to also um, choose a type of language that will fit, doesn't matter uh, their expertise as well. But something that is also really important uh, when we are presenting is the logistics. So uh, we should consider when creating a presentation, how this would happen. So it would be in person, remote, needs to be available all the time, the presentation. Do you need to just create and send by email? Are different presentation all together? So in person or remote? For in, if you are presenting your presentation in person, look at the people in the eye so that you can create a connection, stays around 30 seconds, and then move to the next person. I still remember the first time I had to present my research find, uh, insight and findings to an uh, audience. There were more than 300 people. And it was the first time I was speaking in public with so many, so many people in front of me. And then a colleague told me also that as I was feeling nervous to look at her at the beginning, so I was feeling more comfortable because I was looking at someone that I knew. And that's also a really nice uh, tip in case you are at the beginning of your career, you feel nervous presenting in person or remotely as well. This is valid also for remote. So try to create a connection with someone you know, so that you can relax a bit and then use the other technique, look at the, in the eye the other uh, participants. So also this will help them also to pay more attention because they think like, oh, maybe I'm the next one after, so I need to be prepared. Then your body language is, is, is important as your voice. So, uh, I mean, uh, I'm Italian, so we normally just uh, move a lot our hands. And uh, that's really important to not uh, move the body so much. And also be sure that everything you need is nearby and it works. So uh, prepare in advance, check if the, the presentation works fine and so on. Well, if you are remote, be sure that they can hear you clear and you can, uh, they can see your presentation. Try to create a connection with the people in the call, even though it's really difficult. And try to create some call to action so that they can uh, follow you and don't lose their, their attention. Don't, don't use too much uh, hands, uh, even uh, when you are remotely. And be sure to have a good and stable internet connection that unfortunately, even though we are after two years of pandemic, that's not always the case. Then. Regarding the availability of the presentation, sometimes it might be that we present the presentation, let's say, to uh, in a meeting where there are other teams. But then we need to share and put this presentation in the server so everyone that might need in the future have access. So you need to see if you need to create two different presentations or you create only one, but then it needs to be easy to read because you are not going to be there to explain. So it's important that it's clear with uh, just by reading it. Then the common language again, you as there are several people that are going to, to take a look at your presentation. So it might be that they are from different type of audience. 
you need to, you don't know their background. So you need to create a common language so everyone can understand. So not going too technical and so on. And also be uh, brief because especially managers, they don't have so much time to, um, to read the presentation. So as I said before, maybe be brief one regarding the, the cluster, the, the methods, the, the segmentation and so on, and go directly to the, to the, to the insights and the recommendations. Then what happens if you need to share by email? In this case, it's similar to uh, when you need uh, um, the presentation to be available at the time. Unfortunately, you don't know who is going to receive because it could be that you send to your manager and the manager will forward to other people. So it's important also that in the email, you create an intro text, explain it again, as I said before, the topic, a bit of uh, the background of the project, uh, where it came out, and um, give a brief summary of the findings. So if they don't have time to see your presentation, they know what's going on. And then it could might happen that you are presenting together with you is presenting also a colleague and then the manager asks, ah, can you join the presentation together? In that case, you need to make it clear. You can create a one slide where you see, you show to the audience when one presentation finish and the other one starts so they don't get confused. So uh, as a takeaways, I was thinking what could be that is important. Of course, pay attention to your audience. Sometimes it might happen that you don't know to who you are exactly uh, presenting, but you will have an idea. The storytelling, so create like a nice story uh, with the, an intro, a main uh, topic, and then the conclusions. The communication and the language is really important and try to capture their attention with some uh, interesting data that you find in your research. Thanks for the attention. Uh, just as a conclusion, um, I would like to share with you uh, in MediaMarkt Saturn, we are uh, hiring. We are looking for a UX researcher to join the research team. Um, we would like someone that has some years of experience and uh, that uh, speak good German. And we have several positions for UX designers. So um, you find the position both on MediaMark Saturn uh, website, but also on LinkedIn. So if you are interested, take a look. Thank you so much uh, Moira, for your presentation. Um, so we now have time for some questions. Yes. Um, we have multiple options. You can either um, ask your questions in the chat mm -hmm. and I will read it Moira. Or okay. um, you can also turn on your microphone and maybe even your camera and yes. ask the person and we have a conversation. So both is possible. So maybe I start with some questions. Yeah, um, of course. I will take a look at the, at the chat if we get some, uh, some questions, yeah. But um, so you, met, you, you mentioned that you want, like earlier in your career, you had a situation where you presented UX research insights to um, more than 300 people. Can you tell us a little bit more about like, context here or how did you get the chance to present user research insights to such a big audience? So um, it was kind of a conference, but it was uh, organized by the, the place where I was working. And um, they invited, uh, of course, all the stakeholders and uh, there were like other teams and um, there were also like uh, it was kind of like open to public as well. So a lot of people got interested and uh, we were presenting several projects and uh, I was one of them. So it was really, I mean, I just finished them at the time. I just finished the master. So I had the opportunity, of course, to present some projects, but it was mostly with my classmates. So uh, it was really, I was really, really nervous that time, but um, it went all good. I uh, was presenting in Italian, actually, so it was even better because, I mean, it was it's my mother tongue, so it was, even though I was nervous, it was good. 
Um, but he was, um, that time it was difficult because the audience was so uh, different. Yeah, I think we... Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we, we can. can. We can okay. hear you. Yes, we can hear you. So it's Sina maybe that is froze. Hmm. Okay, she's back. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was gone for one minute. Okay. No, I, I mean, I, as I said before, <laughs> this stuff happens all the time. So, <laughs> no. Yeah, worries. I gave my best, <laughs> but it happens. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, I can imagine um, that this was a special situation presenting to such yeah. a big audience. And, and that's the thing, like, it was really difficult to target the presentation because there were, as I said before, it was open to public. So there were, like, people that really had no knowledge of what we were talking about. So I was really nervous because, like, okay, I need to be careful with the technical terms because, I mean, I always wanted everyone to understand what I was talking about. So uh, it was really, it was a tough time, but uh, we succeeded, so it was really good. Yeah, and um, maybe one more question. So, um, like I noticed like a lot of the tips you gave actually have not so much to do with the presentation itself, but more with the way you communicate yes. um, around that. So my question would be like, do you also um, adapt the presentation and by that I mean like I spe I'm speaking of slides but maybe it's something else mm -hmm. um, in a way to the different audiences or do you keep this one the same and just like um, adapt the communication around that no I create the, the slide itself so um, because um, let's say that maybe you are talking to a manager uh, maybe the he's more interested with the graph you know of uh, maybe you conducted a survey so you can show the graph of the uh, showing the percentage of the people that reply a specific question for a uh, specific answer and so on so also the slide itself needs to be um, target to the audience you know so not only while I'm presenting so the communication part but also the layout the visuals also of the presentation yeah Okay, so I see we get some questions in the chat. Um, so maybe the first one about, like I will pick the, the ones about the presentation in, uh, in the first place. And we have like a breakout room later uh, where Myra will also uh, join one of them. So if you have like questions to other topics, um, I think that's a good, good setting for, for um, those questions as well. Or as you mentioned, uh, you can book a, a, a session with them yeah. via ADP. <laughs> in ADP as so. well. All right. So, um, there's a question um, by David. How did you or do you handle um, the feedback about your presentation and also resistance, maybe? So, um, of course, I mean, we always get some feedback. Um, sometimes it's maybe my manager, she's uh, telling me to adapt some, uh, some maybe some slide and so on. Um, but it's mostly. Uh, I think that is mostly if you like need to convince the managers that based on your research, they should uh, change their ideas, that is really difficult. So you need to have some uh, strong data. Uh, sometimes, for example, uh, besides data, like from uh, interviews or survey, you can have some uh, secondary research you know, finding some articles and so on that maybe can build up a bit more your um, your explanation to them because um, that is, uh, I think that's the, the more challenging part, you know, try to uh, show them, for example, let's say that they are, they want to go for a specific icon and then after a test, you, under, you see that the user can't understand that icon, that they are going back and forth during the journey, they are not realizing how to do something. And then, I mean, those are, the users had uh, showed us that that was not the right icon. So you need to convince them that that's not the way to go. 
Okay. Um, so one more question, um, also about like the uh, the presentation itself, and um, I, I will just read it to you. When when we have to send the same presentation for future reference, it gets a bit challenging sometimes to be brief um, and at the same time describe the context, especially in complex research. Do you have some tips for such cases? Hmm, that's a that's a tough one. Uh, like you, you mentioned, like it's a, it's a good idea to make sure that the presentation itself contains, like, is understandable by just reading it. In case you mm -hmm. you cannot join the an actual presentation, yeah. But maybe I think like we're speaking about uh, like creating presentations for different audiences and target groups here. Yeah. And I think that's also the case. So it's like whenever you communicate the presentation and send out slides via email, for example, um, or re share reports, um, then it's important to give the context. But I think for like the actual presentation itself, so when you as a US researcher, you stand in front of some people or speak with some people, have the chance, it's also totally uh, valuable to um, change the slides here and use what is helpful in that situation. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Of course, when we are presenting, like um, we are there presenting the presentation, we can always add something, you know, that we are just saying, and then is not in the presentation. But when we are like, um, like exactly sending by email or uh, is available, let's say in a cloud system or something, then we need to, uh, in that case, maybe it's better that there is a bit more text then what I, what I would prefer that is more visual, because of course, the people you are not there to explain. So always be careful, of course, too much text. Maybe it's better to uh, split in different slides so there is not too much uh, things, but of course, uh, maybe like, let's say that you, you put some graph or something, and then you add like a text explaining the graph or what they can, uh, because that's also, uh, something more difficult when you don't know if the people that are going to see they have a background and they know how to uh, to understand a graph you know so in that case you need to give a bit more explanation by some text box in the back box in the in the presentation and so on yeah you already like you have one question but can we uh, follow up um, on what you just said so um, you spoke about like using graph or visual elements in the presentation, and we have one question by Ben Sandra. Sandra, um, how do you visually structure your insights and findings in a compelling way? Can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about this. <laughs> um, so I, of course, when when I uh, switch my career, so from researcher in social sciences, I went to UX research. Uh, I did some design course and also a graphic design course to have like a better background uh, while I was transitioning in the in this uh, in this area. And then there I also learned, for example, how to uh, create like nice presentation with some more visual. So like for example, um, use icons or for example, sometime maybe a graph. It's too complicated, so we can you know like uh use some maybe um uh, let's say uh like a podium you know and just writing uh for example the three main insights that we found and so on so something more um like uh, i like to first of all like include in one slide one insight because otherwise it's too much things you know especially even uh, when you have to um, keep the presentation available for a longer period because otherwise it's too many things in the same slide then the people will get super confused and uh, they will not follow the story that you planned um, but also like um, try to and and that's also wh what I was saying that it takes a bit to to get to be good in this you know like I mean when I started I was really like uh, putting too many things in my slide and then I was getting feedback that they were way too long. Uh, so it takes a bit of time. It's always good to practice. 
and also to uh, to refine, uh, for example, um, how can you share your insight in a brief way, but at the same time, uh, don't forget to tell them something important, you know? So for example, maybe some, uh, um, some, I don't know, some dots and then explaining the main findings or something like that. So try to be brief, but at the same time, uh, don't forget some important aspect of your research. Yeah, I think like for the visual elements, I mean, you used some of them in your presentation yourself, like yeah. um, quotes, like in user research, showing quotes from yeah. users. It's, I think, a really good idea. And even better if you like, uh, if you uh, have recordings, um, yeah, if showing it's them possible, express. absolutely. If you have video always, like, or images from interviews or observation or usability tests, include them in the presentation because I mean if they, you manage to show them directly what the user are struggling with that is even more direct than a nice graph you know so <laughs> yeah absolutely exactly I mean if you compare like just to say like if you say uh, users have problems to find um, a certain feature um, or yeah. to reach a button that's the one thing, but you could also like show a video of users actually having problems and taking yeah. the action and that really helps you to convey your findings. And I think it's, it's a good idea to visualize um, uh, the insights and findings. Mm -hmm. um, and also like we were speaking about like the slides, the typical slide format, I think that's still pretty common in many, in many contexts, but like we're also speaking about like preparing presentation or doing presentations to different audiences and also and sometimes other formats besides slides work much better uh, where you really yeah. like prepare like the show the recording or you yeah, absolutely. don't if have like the possible, classical slides but something more yeah if it's possible yes absolutely like maybe a short video of you saying something you know just to because it could be that that's more effective because i mean as we know some stakeholders, manager, they don't have so much time. So you have to think also what is the, the more direct way to go to the point. Yeah. All right. Um, one more question from the chat. Uh, from Michaela. Oh, Michaela. Um, do you use tools um, like, like Figma or Miro to present results mm -hmm. to designers? What is your experience with more interactive formats? So, um, unfortunately, at the moment in my current um, company, uh, we don't use Miro. I use it in the past. I really like it. Uh, I used as well Figma uh, to, you know, like some low fidelity prototype uh, to show uh, the idea. But uh, I also really like uh, just pen and paper <laughs> for my prototype. So um to show some ideas to the designers i think that you need to see which is the most effective uh tool for you so i think that it depends like for example there are i mean lately there are so many so many tools also online uh some are free uh to also for example to to if you are conducting a focus group and so on with the users uh, where there is a more interaction uh, for them, so I I think that uh, of course, like I mean, nowadays we are working also still remotely, so of course uh, tools are really important. So yeah, Miro, Mural also is really nice, uh, Figma or some people use Sketch uh, or Adobe XD. I don't know. I mean, there are a lot of tools that. Uh, that are really useful in this case. Of course, it depends also what you want to show uh, to the designers. If it's like a, a prototype or something, or it's maybe a, a, the results of a survey, or like, um, for example, in Miro is really nice. You can also put some uh, part of the videos of or quotes of the of the user. So, I mean, there are a lot of tools, so <laughs> it's difficult to to say all of them, but yeah, I mean, the, nowadays the tools are helping us a lot. Yeah, and like, um, 
I showed you at the beginning, like with Conan, we also um, yeah, helped you exactly, exactly with that. So also we have one question about um, like the, the challenge of sharing video snippets and um, when you share it via like also email communication. Um, but besides like traditional slides, there are like other options um, where it's maybe much easier to include video snippets. For example, like um, I showed you in Condens, um, of course there are other ways um, than that, but here you could um, easily create like highlights from, from, an, inter from an interview study um, and just bring that video snippet to, um, to your report that you can share and you can share it simply um, by sharing a URL. So there's no huge attachment uh, with the video files or video snippets um, and your, your audience can still open it, actually see or hear users um, uh, speak about their experiences um, or use your product or services. And um, it's easier for people to, to dive deeper from there. So there are definitely other ways. Um, okay. So we have uh, maybe a, one or two more questions in this round. Yes. And then I would suggest that we head over to like smaller groups um, yes. and continue the conversation there. Maybe, okay, one from Oliver. Um, how to share your research insights best with engineers from the product team. And what is your experience in general um, of the value of sharing insights with engineers and developers? Okay, so, um, so, I mean, of course it depends like on the background of the engineers, as I said before, they are like uh, people that also change their career. So that's also something, but, um, mm, it happened to me sometimes that I was talking with some like uh, engineers, especially when I was working in the robotics company, they have no idea of UX and uh, and all the the area regarding the user. So uh, I had to uh, use kind of like a more uh, general language in that case, uh, because otherwise if I was technical, they were not following me. Uh, in that case, I used um, uh, videos of observation, for example, or interviews to let them understand better why I was requesting, in that case, the robot to do some specific things instead of what they had planned because of the user uh, was, uh, because of this observation with the users. So in that case, video helped me a lot. Uh, but also, like, um, in that case, also, we had the opportunity with the engineers to, uh, I was taking with them, with me during the field studies, for example, and that helped them a lot to understand the, the users. But of course, if we are more in a, uh, let's say, like, um, um, online company, like, for example, we are developing an app or an e-commerce, or uh, something like that, then of course it's more difficult to, to take them with you during your observation. So in that case, I will, as, as Tina said before, share with them also um, the videos from the repository, uh, quotes, and um, yeah. And also try to use like a more uh, common language. Because I mean, if we are stay, if we are going too too technical on the UX, uh, uh, like uh, words, then maybe they get a bit lost. And the other question was, what is your experience? The value of sharing research insights with the developer or development team or engineer. So I think that um, I mean, at least based on my experience, they are always really happy when we are like when the researchers are sharing uh, the insight and uh, they are always curious they come out with other uh, question ah but did you check in this way how was uh, this uh, did you see this other uh, maybe like a different scenario and so on so i i i, I personally like to share with them because uh, they also take uh, you know like we match because i i take what the user are experiencing and then they tell me also like how this can be implemented, you know, because I mean, I don't have like a background as developer or engineer. So maybe I, 
would like that they do something and then they say like mm, this like this is not possible so we try to find you know like a way to uh to adapt to the to the occasion you know yeah i also think like um you mentioned like if there's the chance to invite team to um the actual session that's always like, a good idea and i fully agree that like today we're speaking about like typical presentation but i don't think it's a good idea to to have only the presentations as the, the one point where like other team members or stakeholders um, get in touch with user research. Do you have like other examples um, or ideas when you, how you involve the development team, for example, or other stakeholders besides the presentation? I mean, sometimes it happened because uh, when I started working in the startup, I, it was just me <laughs> as a researcher, and then I had some interns. But uh, when we, I, I, sometimes I needed to do brainstorming, you know, like, okay, I got all the information, and now what? You know, so mm -hmm. I was um, involving them in the development, you know, all the, uh, like, in different process of the research. Like, um, as I said before, if I could, I was taking with them doing, for example, feed studies in that case. Um, they were helping me uh, interviewing the users, for example, but then also being part of analyzing the data. So, okay, mm -hmm. let's watch the video. Let's see what came out from it, you know, like, uh, let's uh, help me to take notes. So, you know, a bit more um, involving them also on your side, you know, because otherwise they get kind of like the, the, the ready research, you know, like, ah, this is the report, uh, these are the insights, these are my recommendation, and then they go on with their, with their task. While it's nice to involve them in your pro research process. So make them more active uh, also doing, for example, um, organizing some, um, meetings with them, ask them their opinion, and so on. So like uh, invite them on your side. Yeah, yeah, I think that's uh, really helpful um, to, to work with or collaborate during like every phase of research. And that's yes, when because the, in, in the, the sense they also, they also understand also like, because some people think that the research is all uh, easy and uh, we have no uh, issue while we are doing uh, our research, but then they understand also our side, you know, is uh, is also more clear also the user frustration, the issue they have and so on. So it's easier also for them to find a solution. Yeah. Okay, so we do, I would suggest we do one more question here. Um, okay. By Joanna, we have um, the question, how do you manage to attract stakeholders to make time for your presentation as everyone so, has such different time schedules yeah that's that's extremely difficult but uh for example in that case um you could do like you could send an email but without putting your presentation inside so send an email saying that uh, uh, you are done with your research you have some really nice insights give them some hint just to attract them a bit and then ask them when they have time so that you can show them all the rest. So I would say like to give them just like, you know, uh, some of the nice insight that you got in the email and then already like plan, okay, can we, when do you have time this week or next week? Can we, so I can show you the rest and so on. So I think that's the, the, the best uh, to attract them. Of course, like, if it's a big company, it's through email. If it's a small, maybe startup, you can just like uh, step by uh, in their office and say like, ah, I finished the research. I found some really nice, uh, interesting insights. Would like to show you. Do you have time later? And so on. So just to give them some small insights so that they get a bit, uh, you know, curious. 